Hey everyone, it's Scott Todd filling in for Mark the Land Geek. He's out this week, and you know what? It's kind of a good thing that he's out this week. One, uh, I mean, like he's not going to be able to harass us on this call. And two, we kind of have a big group, and if he was here, well, it'd just be bigger. So let me introduce who's here. First of all, we have Mike Zeno. Zeno's with us. Mike, how you doing today? Hey, I'm doing very well, Scott. Great to be here. Glad you're here. Scott Bossman is here. Scott, how are you doing tonight? Uh, great, Scott. Thank you. Notice I said tonight. It's actually in the daytime, but man, I think that the <laughs> nightcap guy should be at night, so I don't know why I even just said night. It's obviously a mistake. And yeah. another guy, I haven't seen him in a while, and it's good to see him. Bearland Aaron's here. Bearland, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. It's good to see you too, Scott. Awesome. And also is Eric, Eric Peterson. How you doing, Eric? I'm good. All right. And then we have, like, Mimi. How can we, like, you know, not have a roundtable at Mimi? Mimi, I'm glad you're here. How you doing today? Thank you. I'm glad to be here, too. Awesome. And, great. Then, and then without him, I don't know that we'd have a roundtable. It's the big papa. Someone's big papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how you doing? I'm great, man. Happy to be on here. Looking All right. forward to the today's topic. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, I think so too. You know, like before the, the round table, we were talking about what is it? Like what, what, what should we talk about? What's the topic of the night and, or the day? I keep going tonight. And basically what we decided to do is we decided to like, let's address some of the sales mistakes either that we've made or we see other people make. So let's just jump right into it. Okay. So let's just go over to Bearland. Bearland. What's a sales mistake either you've made or you see other people making and like, how do people prevent it? Well, um, I hope I'm not stealing Eric's thunder with this, but it's uh, what he had mentioned before. Do you want me to save that for you, Eric? No, go ahead, Aaron. Okay. With a new one. <laughs> okay, good. Because it really, really rang true as soon as he said it with, with, with me personally. And I've done this a couple times, and um, I kick myself every time I repeat the mistake. And that is not putting a timeline on uh, getting my doc signed when I sell somebody a property. Um, and in fact, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the last time that happened was just recently, and it was a customer who's bought several parcels from me. So he's probably my best customer. And uh, he's a, kind of one of those really busy um, executive kind of guys that real hard to nail down, but he likes buying property. And um, he bought something on me that I, uh, off of me that I shared like on a first look kind of email. He was, he replied back in about five minutes and said he wanted it. So um, I did up all the paperwork. And uh, I sent it over to him and like three days later, I'm still waiting for the sign now docs to be signed and stuff like that. So I'm leaving him messages and this and that. And, uh, you know, finally I had to call him and say, man, if you don't want this property, I've got other people that, that want to buy it, but you know, let me know. And finally he, he went ahead and, and got that done. And then, uh, you know, we set him up on Geek Pay, and uh, he, uh, what was the deal? There was, oh, I, I actually was still waiting on um, his ACH confirmation form because I do one for each deal because I think that's what we're supposed to do um, with our processor. But uh, it took forever to get that. And finally, you know, this is like two weeks later, he finally goes in Geek Pay and uh, manually adds the stuff himself, which I guess I was okay with. But, um, you know, this drug on for quite, quite a while, you know, and we're, by the time it was all done, we were like within a week of his first payment coming up. And, um, you know, it was a really difficult situation. And I, uh, you know, we got it all done and everything, but I, you know, that's definitely something I'm going to avoid in the future. I'm definitely going to put some sort of time limit on there and make it very obvious that there's a time limit. Otherwise, you know, the property is just, you know, your, your right to purchase it is surrendered after this period, regardless of who you are. 
All right. So I, I, I obviously that's a, a mistake that, that sometimes people make, but let's, let's walk forward a little bit. Like what, or kind of uncompress that a little bit. What's the big deal if they don't sign the paperwork? Like what's the big deal if, you know, it goes 30 days and they haven't signed it and you know, like what, what's the big concern that you're trying to prevent there? Well, I guess there's a couple. Um, if I have, if it's property like this, where I have, you know, people online that would have wanted it, um, you know, I'm limiting my ability to, um, you know, possibly turn the money faster. You know, I don't know, maybe one of those would have been a cash sale and I could have gotten the cash and reinvested it quicker. Um, so speed of money kind of thing. But the other thing is, uh, you know, I, I guess maybe just a personal preference of not wanting to have things hanging out there. Um, it's too easy to forget them, you know, yeah. too easy to forget stuff if you don't get it done in a timely manner. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. That's a, that's a good one. So, you know, put, put a deadline on your, on your documents. Let's go over to Mimi. Mimi, what mistake, what's the mistake that you make? or I have, other two. I have two. So I now use a lead page for my deal of the week so that people aren't going out to my website and getting shiny object syndrome, seeing other problems, right? But I've had kind of a wave of inventory. I'm trying to solve an inventory shortage. And one of my ad copywriters is, I always have them put my property on my website, but then I don't publish them all. So maybe you can see three, four properties, but my poster on Facebook can still send somebody a website link so they see a professional property, right? When they look at the property. So sure enough, I'm talking with a guy yesterday on the phone trying to close a sale on a property. He's like, yeah, but I went out to your website and I saw all these properties. So now I want to look around and I went, oh, oh man. She published all the properties she'd added. So, and I'd even put in the, what I wanted her to do to make sure she unchecked it. So that, making sure that you don't post too many pieces of property out on your website so that people go, and, oh, you've got so many of these. There's no scarcity here. Or they get shiny objects. Well, maybe I can afford a five acre instead of two and a half, right? And my second one is usually when someone asks to, wholesale something from me buy a property from me for wholesale I'll give them a link to pitch to the pictures but not to the other things that my marketing uh, admin puts together they're a little different and I went ahead and sent him everything he's like oh my gosh all this marketing stuff is so great can you show me how to do it <laughs> so you know I'm trying to add value and I just sent out you know giving away my secrets but Oh, well, so those are my two most recent as of yesterday and today marketing mistakes. I will tell you, you know, like that's one of the things that I always um, am try, to, try to be cautious of is we, we get so excited when we buy a property. And I, I mean, like I know in the beginning, I know in the beginning, like when I bought a property, I couldn't wait to get on the website and like do an email blast. And then all of a sudden what happens is you end up with, like you said, you end up with 10 of the same properties out there. And then where's the urgency? Where's, where's the, um, you know, the, the lack of, of uh, supply, if you will, right? Like there's a lot of things that go missing when you just put everything out there. And one of the things that I always thought was cool about builders, if you ever go into a community, a new community that's built or being built, and you drive through there, it's like nothing but like all raw land, right? Like the streets are all in, but all raw land. And you go in there, and you're like, I want to buy this property. And they're like, well, that's in phase four. That'll be a year and a half from now. Oh, I don't want to wait a year and a half from now, but I want this one. Well, sorry, it's not available today. So or they'll they, say, that's a $10,000 upcharge for that lot. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, they, they, create, they create a lot of uh, demand that way by, by holding the supply. I think you're right. You got you to gotta create that. You can't overwhelm your customers. You got to give them kind of a limited, limited supply so that they want more. And I always like to say like, hey, I, I might have something available. If you don't see anything on here, let me know what, what you're looking for. Let me see what I can find you. And then magically you have one that might just fit the need. It's like the one in the back, like that magically fits you, right? That's a good one, Mimi. All right, Scott Bossman, what do you have? Well, I'll give you two examples. One, uh, 
I've done myself way back in the beginning and I see a lot of beginners do now and I would highly recommend not drawing up any paperwork without a doc fee. Uh, I did this one time long ago uh, and I snail mailed the documents to someone because I had no automation at the time. And I was waiting around on this guy to, to you know, to buy this property. Uh, so that happened one time. I learned my mistake the hard way, but I still talk to people on coaching calls who are on the verge of a deal and they're drawing up the paperwork. And I say, have you gotten a doc fee for this? Uh, and, uh, and many of them have not. And it just ensures that the buyer is serious and it ensures that you will not waste your time. So whether it's 99 bucks, 149, whatever, get a little something before you draw up your paperwork. That's a common mistake I, I hear about. And then I'll tell you about a mistake I made recently. I picked up a piece of land wholesale in an area that I know from another land investor. He was not a land geek, but I picked it up because I liked the area. Uh, I sold that property on terms uh, and, and it was basically sight unseen. Uh, he didn't have any pictures for me, but I looked at the aerial pictures. I knew the area well. It was a great property as far as I knew. I sold it to a uh, repeat buyer on terms. He's bought a couple lots for me. Well, he just went out there a couple weeks ago and uh, noted that there is an abandoned camper on the property. So he was a little bit upset and uh, I had to, I have a mess now to deal with. I got to get that camper off the property. Well, it's a truck camper, so I don't think it's going to be a big deal. But I guess a mistake I made there, and this is something we commonly do, I think, is we buy land sight unseen and, and we do sell it sight unseen. People purchase this property from us sight unseen. So now if it had been a cash deal, it would be interesting to see who would be dealing with this issue. Uh, but it's a terms deal, so I have a little bit of a mess on my hands. It's probably going to cost me a couple hundred bucks. Wow, man. Like you didn't tell them like, yeah, that's available. That's included with no charge. Like it's all yours. Well, <laughs> it's a house you can live in it brother what's what do you complain about it's shelter for you yeah i think the, i think some varmints have been in it and it's uh, probably wasn't in the best condition and there's an old rundown gas grill in there too so oh man you know it's a lot like the um the example i talked about at the last boot camp where, where we ended up having like 200 tires on a property and it was a, it was a, a mess and you know, it's it's out of all the deals I've ever bought, it's like that's the only one that I ever had like a mess on when I bought the property. So, you know, it's, you know, over, over a large scale of numbers, over a large volume, these things typically don't happen. But when they do, they, they could be, you know, I still made money on that deal. But at the same time, it's like, man, that, that kind of, that's kind of a wash on that property. I, I probably should have said to the guy, listen, I'll just give it to the property to you free of charge at this point and you can just clean off the mess, right? I mean, probably would have been better for me just to break even like that than to go and spend the money to go do it, make it someone else's problem. But it's, it's it really is fixable. But those are, those are good examples. Thank you. It's a, yeah, it's a fixable problem and it's very uncommon, like you said. So I'm, very few headaches in this business. Right, right. Eric, what do you have, brother? I got nothing. No, I'm kidding. Um, I stole my, my <laughs> <laughs> um, probably, you know, selling to the wrong person, being too anxious to make the sale. And whether that means, um, you know, maybe cutting your doc fee, cutting your down payment, maybe cutting your monthly payments because you just want the sale more than you want to, you know, wait it out for the right buyer. And the reality is like, we have certain metrics that we try to achieve when we're selling property. You know, we want to be able to get our capital out in 12 months or less, um, preferably well less than that. But, you know, if you don't run your business by those kinds of rules, you're going to find yourself short on capital sooner or later. Um, so, and it, that's just one piece of selling to the wrong person, right? I mean, that's one scenario. It could, it could be any number of different things. You know, someone doesn't have an email address and you're going to try to sell to them. You know, that's a whole new headache. You're going to mail out docs. You're going to wait for them to be mailed back. I mean, some of these things, you know, as anxious as you might be for a sale, um, may not be worth your time. So stick to the recipe as Scott would say, and, uh, follow what we teach. Yeah, ru rushing the sale, you know, like we get so um, 
we get we get so much desire to like want to get the sale done that we kind of rush it and then it's like a mess you know like you you start to bend and that really is one of the things i think that that banks have right you know like they they do right like they have criteria and if you know i'm not saying we have to have, be as stringent as, as the criteria of a bank but at the same time man if we can go and like give them some flexibility in terms of the terms but there are some non-negotiables like an email address, for example, or, you know, look, you, you know, you can't finance the doc fee, whatever it is. You got to have the lines in the sand and say like, these are non-negotiables. No way. We're not doing it. It doesn't, it never works out well for me. I'll tell you, Eric, like one that, that I always cringe at, like I did, I did like, uh, I had a bird, like when I turned, I think I turned like when I turned 45, I did like, Hey, I'm 45, $45 down payment. Oh man. Let me tell you something. I sold a lot of land that day, but I think that they only lasted like a month, maybe two. I think I got like, I locked up the land for like $49, $45 for like six months, or no, two months while it went through the, the foreclosure of the default process. It was like, well, okay. It was a nice little quick hit on sales, but it was a disaster long term. So don't rush that piece you know, come, come up with your criteria and do it and avoid all of these pains that Eric just talked about. All right, Tate, what do you have, man? Well, it's funny, uh, Scott, you actually jumped to one of my biggest pet peeves. And that's what I was going to talk about is giving the land away for, for next to nothing, right? Dollar down $50. I hate that. I, <laughs> I've never, I don't know. I've done it and it's nice. It makes you feel like, oh, I'm winning. I'm getting all these deals done. But the reality is you're selling a piece of property for $25 down. Most of the time, no doc fee. And that person, there's a high probability they won't sign the document. So that's one of my biggest pet peeves. The other pet peeve that I have is um, when, when people spend too much time working with somebody that has zero interest in the property, right? So the person's not communicating, they're not responding to your questions and you're just sitting there calling, texting, emailing them. And it's pretty obvious. I mean, the writing's on the wall. This person is not interested. They might've contacted you one time, but if they haven't continued to communicate with you, they're not interested. So I, I talk to people all the time in coaching calls and they're like, yeah, I'm spending two hours a day following up with old leads. And I'm like, two hours? That's insane. I mean, if somebody's not calling you back, put them on the buyer's list and move on. Work with people who are progressing. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. So I guess that's kind of on the sales side. You know, it's funny because a lot of times what I'll see from people is they'll be like, oh, well, the guy say he doesn't have any money today, but he'll have money in two weeks. And so two yeah. weeks I follow up with the guy. Well, I hate to tell you this, but if he doesn't have any money today, he's not going to have two money in two weeks. Like he, like he can't buy, he's not a buyer. But how many times do you hear people that are like, Oh, I'm calling on, I'm calling the guy that has no money. Well, the people that have no money, first of all, they can't, they can't buy from you. And two, do you really want somebody like that, that has no money today, magically in two weeks, they're going to have money. And do you think that they're going to pay the bill every month without you having to like, I don't know, call them and ask them for the payment? No, it's not going to happen. They have no money. So, I mean, think about that. You said, I'm calling the guy that had no money. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it just like makes no sense to me, but it goes back to what Eric said about us being almost desperate for those sales. And when you get desperate, that's when you make dumb decisions and you end up working with people that you have no business working with. Right. And they're just going to suck your time away. That's it. Yeah. I have a I gotta, now here. It was like three months ago, he's, his bank mailed me a check and it didn't arrive and it didn't arrive. And then he like did, did the, did it through the system. And now it's like the third month that the check is miraculously lost. And now like he's just lying to me to put off paying the check for three weeks. So now I'm at the point where I'm almost going to say no more checks. Yeah. Well, I think that, uh, you know, I, I think that the, the, the funny thing is, is that, you know, Tate, I think you've said this is 
deal with like don't beg people to do, to, to do business yeah. with you right like find th- this is it's a lot i i mean I, I know i say this in flight school i say this all the time it's a lot like dating okay like if if the girl you're calling is not responding you're stalking don't be a stalker right like don't don't be creepy about it so essentially just find the people that, that are interested and spend your time there it doesn't mean that, you, that that you're not catching them at bad times because things do happen i mean like Mike and I know this guy that he he uh, was was interested in land. He actually bought some land, and then like right after he bought it, he got into a, a, a very serious car accident, got like hit head on. So you know, is is the guy gonna respond? Well, probably not. He probably has more pressing issues than than buying the land. So it doesn't mean that he's not a, a potential buyer, but you you table it right. Like he should get no additional time until he's back as a potential buyer. Which, which again, may be zero months from now. So, you know, you got to kind of like, like listen to the customers or, or give them the benefit of the doubt. But at the same time, don't go trying to chase some people that, that don't want to be on the phone with you because they're going to get annoyed with you. We're not in the convincing business. There you go. There you go. You're not in the convincing business. There you go. You got to take. Well, you look, know, other, go ahead. The other side of that, too, is with that desperation, um, you know, whether it's dating or sales, is that you're going to, to repel those customers that are the customers you want that do have the money for the down payment and the doc fee and will be good customers because, you know, desperation comes through no matter how hard you try to try it or how hard you try to hide it. And it, you know, it's, it's a hamper in every way on your sales business. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, that brings us to that time of the week. And we really didn't- wait, 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 wait. You're not going to share anything. I've been sharing. I've been, I, I, I've like you've been contributing. Like you've been adding oh. on to what I've been saying. What, what are you and like? But Eric and land geek junior and harassing. I mean, does <laughs> more- I mean somebody's got to do it. <laughs> I thought like- I had an out. All right. All right. All right. All right. Tim. All right. Thanks for calling me out, man. <laughs> Jeez. Man, there's been so many of these. Like, okay, so look, this is this is one that uh, this is one that that happens, especially, um, you know, like when when you're dealing with high volume of sales, and like in my organization, we do a high volume of sales. We do our best uh, to kind of look at these things, but essentially, mistakes do happen from time to time, and that is, you know, like you'll sell a property, and you'll miss something, and what I mean by that is. Um, you know, like may, maybe the, the, the taxes got missed on the, the final payment taxes got missed. Okay. Um, you know, something like that. And then, then your buyer gets a note from the County or maybe the deed is wrong. And then the buyer gets the note from the County and they call you up and they're flipping out, you know, like they are freaking out over this thing. And, you know, like I had a guy yesterday that he called, <laughs> he called me up and he's like, uh, you know, furious with me and I get it. I, I understand. And basically what happened was um, he, he had been paying taxes along the way with his note. He was a terms buyer. And what happened was the county sent him a tax bill. And it was right there on the borderline. Like the taxes came in right about the same time he got the deed. And he felt like that we should pay it. And, you know, so what did he do? Instead of calling me first, he called the county. And he started arguing with the county. Okay, like he's arguing with the county tax collector that he shouldn't be responsible for paying the taxes, that that's somebody else's responsibility. And they're like, listen, dude, pay the taxes, don't pay the taxes, it's not on us, right? But the guy was yelling, he actually made it all the way, believe it or not, he made it all the way to the county treasurer, the lady treasurer, like the person that you get the tax bills from. He made it to her, he's screaming at her. She told him, do not call my office ever again until you calm down. And she hung up on him. So he calls me telling me what, what a jerk I was for stiffing him with the bill. And I'm letting him rant and rave. And then he tells me he got blacklisted from ever calling the tax collector again. And that, that somebody's going to steal the property from him. And that the tax collector should have never have signed the deed to give him the deed. Notice the key words there. See how he's not necessarily thinking this whole thing through. The tax collector signed the deed to give him the deed. So I listened to him. I let him run out his energy. And then I said, 
His name's Brian. Real name's Brian. So Brian, if you're listening, sorry. But Brian, like Brian, it was a mistake. I'll call right now and pay the taxes. They won't let you do that. They said no. I said, don't worry, Brian. I have resources. I can get this thing done for you. Don't worry. So I hung up the phone. I call the county. I give them the APN number. They take that APN number. They now know that this guy that had called them is now like having me call back. They're like, sir, hold on one minute, okay? I'm like, okay. They transfer me to the tax treasurer, the treasurer. Like, I don't get to talk to another agent. I'm talking to the boss. And she starts telling me what a jerk this guy is. And I'm like, I get it. I know. I'm sorry. I'm like, can I just pay the taxes? And she goes, well, the state law says that he has to pay the taxes because he's the owner. I'm like, listen. Do you want them calling you again? Or do you just want me to deal with it and I'll pay it? She's like, what's your credit card number, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, like, I guess my advice is that even when you have a deal go bad, like a customer screaming at you like that, and it's a mistake and it's a debatable mistake, like, I think the taxes were like $45, okay? The guy's flipping out over $45, which uh, no problem, I understand that. However, just, just step up. Do the right thing. Diffuse the situation. Apologize for the idiot to the, to the actual treasurer. You win points with her. You win points with the guy. I call the guy back and I'm like, hey, listen, the taxes are paid. Sorry for the confusion. And he ranted more about how he can never call the office again. And I said, don't worry. You can call the office again now. You just have to remain calm, right? And I don't care if he ever gets blacklisted again from the county because I'm done with it now, right? So, you know, I think that the lesson there for, for me and my organization is one, we got to make sure that we have a checklist that we check these things off and before we transfer the title, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta improve or learn from the mistakes, right? We can't keep making the same mistake over and over again. And then second, really when someone's upset, the, the best thing that you can do for them is just remain calm, cool and collective and be that voice of reason for them and you'll lead them out of the path of, of doom and you'll win, win hearts and minds along the way. Is that good enough, Tate? Yeah, I'll accept it. That was very good. All right. All right. Thank, glad, glad I was able to come through with that one. All me right. Too. So that brings us to the tip of the week. But I don't even know who's doing the tip of the week. I'm assuming it's Mimi. I'm but, doing it. Okay, Mimi's got our tip of the week. Go ahead, Mimi. This is not a particularly fun tip of the week, but how many times have we heard people saying that they have violated community standards on Facebook and they don't know what they are? Well, here's the link. Go read them. And if you can't find this link, when you go to press, when you go to place an ad in Marketplace or in the buy sell group, and you have to enter the category and the price and the title, description, the pictures, at the bottom it says they now have a message. Make sure you're following the community standards, some kind of blurb, and it says learn more. So if you ever lose the link, you could get back to what the standards are. Um, I know a lot of you are struggling with this. And a lot of it's really simple things like, I don't know what I did wrong. I posted a picture of a horse in Wild Horse Mesa. What's the problem? Well, animal selling animals violates the community standards on this. So go read these, and I think it'll help you out. You'll have more of your ads without problems. Well, this is like light reading, facebook.com forward slash community standards. That's a good tip, Mimi. Thanks. All right. I messed up. See, this is like another mess up. I messed up. I left off. The, 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 I can't believe I did this. Like, I didn't ask his advice or his sales mistake. Mike Zeno. It's all right. I wasn't going to complain at all. This is, a, this is you know, going last. the best for last. <laughs> I saved the best for last. That's it. This is kind of like a great uh, Jeopardy question for uh, for uh, boot camp. This is a uh, or, the, or not Jeopardy. What do we do there? The uh, Family Feud. Board. Family Feud. Um, but you know, thank you, Scott, and thank you, Eric. For I almost skated right through. Thanks, Eric. Um, <laughs> I think that one of the things that I, as I would consider a sales mistake is that if someone doesn't buy from you, to assume that they won't buy from you and not put them on your buyer's list and just engage in that way. We heard Tate talk about don't keep following up with these quiet leads, but, and he even gave the answer right there, right? The buyer's list. But I think we've all seen people that are uh, new to the business that even though 
they learn in flight school and they, I'm sure they are preached to and they, uh, it's, it's rent, but it's something that can get forgotten or maybe not tended to. So I think that is part of the sales process because if the person doesn't buy now, uh, there's, a, there's many people that we all know that will buy later. So rather than do um, the, the, the fruitless thing that Tate was pointing out and continue to follow up with them, just put them on your buyer's list. So I think, I, you know, even in the beginning, that was something I didn't pay attention to. So it's just got a lot of importance. You know, it's, um, it, that's an important one. And I think that a lot of times, you know, you'll, you'll think like, well, this guy wants something that I'll never have. And so you, you kind of like chunk the lead out, right? Like, oh, this guy's asking for, you know, waterfront property in like the desert. I'm never going to have that. So you're like, ah, oh, this guy, I'm out. But the reality is, is that, you know, like I still think you should put that person on your buyer's list because their life is going to change or their demands are going to change or what they want is going to change. And then all of a sudden, or you may actually find that he wants a, that you come across a, a waterfront property in the desert, right? Like it, it is possible. So essentially you should take every one of these leads and pick them up along the way. I agree with you, Mike, pick them up along the way, add them to the list and you never know. You never know what you're going to find. That's a good one. All right, Mimi, what's your tip of the week? No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, guys, listen, I appreciate you, everybody uh, joining on to this call. I appreciate you guys listening. The only way that we can get better at this thing is to rate, review us on iTunes. Send the screenshot to support at thelandgeek.com. They're going to send you something. I think it's the toolkit, not the toolkit, the uh, uh, passive income blueprint. Launch kit. Launch kit. Quick launch kit. They're going to send you something. Tell them to up it. In your message, I say, Scott said to up this game and let's see what they send you. I don't know. Appreciate you guys joining in. Please uh, add, add your comments, add your voice to this conversation. And uh, should, we, should we do it? Ready to go? One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Hey, that was really good with Mark not being here, by the way. <laughs> All right, I have a question for all you guys, all of you, except for Mike Zeno. Let's see, Mike. Da, 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 da. Okay, uh, Mimi, Mimi's excluded from this question too. Have you guys taken action? Because your computers are going to be banned from flying on airlines. Those MacBooks <laughs> can't get on the airlines, man. Zeno and I are the only ones. Nobody that has a MacBook that's that old. Come on, 2015 to 2017, man. Battery, yeah, battery pack, right? Yeah. So you guys, hey, mine's need... like 2013. So I'm a, I'm good. <sighs> I checked. You can look online, and I got a message. I flew with mine this weekend. I asked, I asked TSA as I went through. I said. How many Macs have you confiscated or prevented from flying? She goes, what are you talking about? <laughs> and how, that must not be a big deal. How would they be able to tell the difference, right? Yeah. Listen, listen, when, don't, I wouldn't violate federal law. You're going to be in a federal it's prison. Sign of the future. I did it. Sign of what's to come. I, yeah, my MacBook is totally fine. Like zero viruses, zero PowerPoint meltdowns at at boot camp, you know, none of that. <laughs> Family <laughs> feud fun. runs fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fun too. Oh, yeah. Fun. yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll just tell you when you got when you can't put your computer on the plane and you're like crying to me, like, I don't have a computer for, for boot camp. I'll be like, hold you. Gave you advance notice, guys. Replace the computers with with surfaces. It's all good. And I have no viruses either. Better sit to the hotel. It'll get there before you do. Yeah, just ship it. That's that's cost convenient and uh, we, we all know Tate will be fine because he has a surface. We all know this. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's right there on the desk. We just can't. show us it. Come on, show Come on. us. So there, there is a rumor, Tate, that you have a surface, and you've never denied or confirmed it. Like you're not <laughs> denying it, you're not confirming it. Listen, everyone here, to all can he who can hear the sound of my voice, I do not. <laughs> Wait, was there a glitch? Something happened to your Mac tape. Like, you yeah, got, all of a sudden I got muted right yeah, there. I don't know what happened. You got muted. Like we didn't get that. You you once again like got out of out of like confirming or denying it. Oh, all man. right, well. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> I have nothing to say to you guys. I thought you were my friend. Well, we are your friends, but I, I don't know what happened to There's you. There's only one person that can mute you, and that's who's hosting the call. I, exactly. He can mute himself. He I don't can know. mute himself. Yeah, take it. Never mute myself. myself. There are some there are some ways around this. I don't know what happened to you. I thought that was Tate. I don't know what's going on here. I'm confused. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Hope you have a good afternoon, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Talk to you later. See ya. Yeah.